Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is part two of my two parts video series inspired by I underscore bleed underscore makeup and she's actually one of my subscribers who suggested that I do a in-depth face and brow routine video. What ended up happening is I ended up splitting that video into two parts. Yesterday's part has already gone up and that video was all about my brow routine and my eyeshadow base routine. This video will all be all about my face routine. I'll be taking you step by step through each and every single aspect of my face routine. I'm going to be talking about what I do when I have foundation on and what I do when I don't have any foundation on, which is, as you guys know, a lot of the time. And I'm going to be giving you all the tips, all the tricks, all the knowledge that I have sort of picked up. And I'm basically going to be telling you how I do these things because I have noticed that on my channel I talk a lot about eyeshadow and eye makeup and lips because like that's what's like really fun for me. Not that the rest of it isn't fun, but for me, doing a face routine, I mean, I always felt like it wasn't as like as I would say in like invigorating as doing the rest of it but what you do with your face makeup is always so important and it always is very helpful I feel to go in depth with those areas so thank you so much um, I underscore bleed underscore makeup for giving me this idea and without further ado let's just get into my face routine I already have eyeshadow on my lids. I just finished filming my brow routine and eyeshadow base routine video, so that will be um, in the cards or down below when it's up. But I will say that I think that my favorite way to do things is to do an eyeshadow, my eyeshadow look first, at least on the top lid, and then do my face after that because what inevitably happens you end up getting some fallout on your face and sometimes that happens sometimes it doesn't happen but because of that i have made it a habit to do my eyeshadow first and then my face makeup second as soon as i'm done with my face makeup i'm going to go in and do my under eye area but the top part of my eyelid always gets done first now let's talk about foundation I, as many of you guys know, choose not to wear foundation. Um, it's just a decision that comes out of a variety of reasons. One of the first reasons is because I just don't like how wearing foundation uh, feels whenever you're in a hot and humid area. And where I live in Texas, that's how it is. So I choose not to wear foundation because of that. I also love going for like, the very natural skin look and the most natural way to have a natural skin look is just by not wearing any foundation whatsoever. So for me, a really great way to just do my makeup is to not wear foundation and to just put products on top. So throughout this video, I will be talking about how I do my makeup with foundation on versus without because sometimes I do wear foundation. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I tend to put on foundation when I do wear it. But most of the time I don't, and I'll be giving you information pertaining to that as well. The foundation that I love to use that's my favorite is the Physicians Formula The Healthy Foundation because it gives me a very natural skin effect. And I will say that I, in general, do not necessarily use that much foundation at all at one time. So what I do is I take the applicator, in this case it's a sponge tip applicator, which is kind of weird, but it's fine, and I deposit the product on the back of my hand. Now I'm going to take a flat brush. Now this is a foundation brush that I love using because when you have a flat foundation brush, you, in my opinion, waste less product. So if I was wearing foundation on a regular basis, I would pretty much be doing it like this. And whenever I choose to wear foundation, I like to just apply it first with a flat brush and I generally concentrate on the areas that need coverage the most. I always have breakouts in this area, in this area as well. So I just put foundation on top of those areas that need coverage. I like to go for a very natural skin look. So a full coverage face, it's not the priority for me. I like to apply a thin layer of foundation just generally all over my face, but most of all where I feel like I need it the most. This is the first time I've actually put on foundation in a really long time. 
but I really want to show you guys like exactly how I do my foundation just you know since this is that kind of video but now um, I think that this brush has already done a pretty good job of sort of like blending everything into the skin however to make sure that everything is extra seamless I go in with this brush right here this is one of the real techniques brushes I love real techniques all the, a, a lot of the brushes that I'm using in this video are actually real techniques and I just use this brush to really just work the remaining product into the skin and I love to like just go like ham on blending out my foundation because like I said before I really want to go for that like real skin look so blending my foundation out as much as possible allows me to do that and basically this effect that you're getting right now it is far from the perfect skin effect that you probably see everybody else do I want the natural skin effect so for me slightly covering up my blemishes in this area evening out my skin tone removing some of the redness around my nose that's what I want in foundation looks and that's generally the techniques that I go for like that is the look that I want to create so these are the techniques that I go for to achieve this during the warmer months my skin tends to get a little bit more oily especially because of the humidity <sighs> it's not fun but um, I used to when I was a lot younger to set my face because I wanted that matte look I also had oily skin so I basically bake my face I would just set it with tons of powder now I don't really use any kind of face powder on my skin because I want to go for that natural luminous effect. So I'm not sure if you can see this on camera that much, but I like that slightly shiny appearance and this foundation specifically gives me that. If I wanted to go for like a more matte, long wearing appearance, I would use a more matte formula for my foundation if I was wearing foundation. I still do bake but only when I'm performing and only when I'm performing outside. I do Ukrainian folk dancing that involves a lot of jumping, a lot of spinning, a lot of sweat and oftentimes I perform outside during the heat such as when I perform in the state fair. So in that case I want to bake. However right now I'm not sweating that much. I don't need to bake. I don't want to bake. I want to keep this luminous kind of like natural skin effect. Also, I don't really like to use concealer because I feel like my foundation does everything that I want coverage wise, so I don't tend to use concealer. I could, but I feel like it's another step that I just don't want to add. Plus, I don't really want to. Now it's time to go for my highlight. Um, for me, Whenever I think about my face makeup and what I want to apply after foundation or even what I just want to apply on bare skin, I think highlight first and then all the other steps after. Because for me, I find that if I do like my bronzer or my contour first and then do my highlight on top, my highlight looks, no matter how much I blend it out, it looks like it was literally just plopped on top of the look like icing on a cake which is nice but I want my highlight to look like it's just meshed into the skin you know and the brush that I use for my highlight by the way it's this brush right here that I got when I was in Moscow like years ago and I was at a art fair and they were selling these brushes and I got this because I wanted to do watercolors with it I have barely used it if at all for watercolor I've used it for highlights for years and I love it. It's a natural bristle brush. I believe that this is a ponytail brush, like literally from a pony. Yeah. And I like it because the size is small enough so I can really just like concentrate on where I want to apply it. And the density of the brush is such that it can really just easily blend out all the product onto my skin. So I usually just load the brush on with some highlight. And I like to start on my cheekbone area. And I try to stay away from texture when I'm using highlight. Sometimes that works better than other times, I'll be honest. But um, just like a FYI, if you apply a lot of highlight onto an area when you have where you have a lot of texture, you are bound to get some kind of like a really just highlighted texture effect, which is sometimes not what you want. But uh, just keep in mind that if you have like a lot of acne, Putting highlight on top of acne sometimes just 
I liked it. So that's just how highlight works. Also, if I wasn't wearing a foundation, I would just apply highlight onto my bare skin and it works just fine. When I apply highlight on bare skin, it works pretty much the same. I just apply it in the same place, it works the same, the brush works the same, it's pretty much sim similar to that. I also like to take the brush and deposit a little bit of highlight down my nose. Notice that I'm not trying to put it like right on the tip of my nose because I don't necessarily want to highlight the tip of my nose. It works just fine, it looks just fine. I do, however, want to highlight this area of the nose to sort of straighten it. I don't necessarily want to highlight the tip because then it just basically creates the illusion of the tip going further out. That sounds so inappropriate. And it kind of also creates the illusion of like a Rudolph nose, which I don't want. So I just like to keep uh, the highlight in this area and that's it. Now I'll take a little bit more and highlight my cupid's bow. It looks really weird right now, but when you apply lip product, it looks beautiful. And I'll take a little bit and add it to my chin as well, just a little bit. I have noticed in uh, several videos that I've done that since ever since I started like filming in different locations and using artificial lighting, if I have highlight on my chin, it makes it look oily. So I try to put less on that area. I will say that whenever I don't have foundation on, I like to go pretty minimal because whenever you don't have any kind of foundation on, if you start loading up product onto your face, my experience has been that the effect ends up looking a little bit too much. You kind of see whenever you're not wearing any foundation anyway, and I don't like the effect of having a lot of powder just sitting on the skin, you know? So if I apply highlight, then blush, then bronzer on top of bare skin, I just don't like that effect. Whenever I don't have any foundation on, I tend to go for highlight, a little bit of bronzer and then I just leave it alone. Otherwise, it ends up looking cakey without looking cakey. It's just weird. It looks like too much. Most face products are not formulated to go onto the bare skin. You know what I mean? They're formulated to go on top of foundation. So for me, I find that if I have bare skin and I end up piling on product, it just kind of, it doesn't look like I want it to. You know what I mean? Probably not, but like, it's just, that's just my preference. I will show you guys my favorite type of blush formula. And keep in mind, I don't like wearing a lot of blush. I just don't like that. And whenever I do wear blush, I like to go for like very dark, not dark, but like just bronzy kind of like tones. Um, one of my favorite colors is this one from Wet n Wild. This is in the shade Apricot in the middle. You can see like this, like this is the type of blush that I like, like kind of like a a rosy brown color but more brown than rosy. I also really really love the Milani baked blushes because like this is such a beautiful formula. These go on really sheer and really luminous and really beautiful. My favorite two colors are Rose d'Or which is basically rose gold I assume and also Bellissimo bronze which is an absolute stunner and so pretty. I'll be using this today because like because it's one of my favorites. What I use for a blush brush typically is either the Morphe E4 brush or this bigger brush right here from like an older EcoTools collection. I've had this for years. I don't think they even make this brush anymore, but the quality is still amazing. I'm just going to use this brush right here. So um, keep in mind, I don't really use blush that often, so I'm not somebody that like is like super comfortable with blush. So what I've been doing is I've just taken a brush, I've dipped it just a little bit in the blush in question, and I take the end of the brush. I don't like to go too close to the bristles because like then you get like a really just like intense effect. And this goes for applying any kind of makeup product. If you go, if your hand placement is too close to the bristles, you get a really harsh effect. If you want a really soft and blended diffused effect, go for the end of the brush or go closer to the end of the brush. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to like lightly add it to just like the area that's kind of on my cheekbone. I don't necessarily go for like the apples of the cheek thing. I just don't. I mean, I tried it. It's not for me. 
I just go for like this area for blush because I just want to like just make my face just sort of lift it if that makes any sense. I don't want to make it just droopy looking. But of course that is the way I prefer to do my makeup. There's no science to it, it's just makeup. And so I accidentally did apply the blush into this area. So if that happens, you can take this brush, the buffing brush that I was using earlier for foundation, and just diffuse the blush so it kind of like disappears out of that area. As you can probably tell, I'm not a fan of applying too much blush. In fact, I rarely use it. But whenever I do wear blush, this is kind of the look that I want to go for. Very minimal, but you know, nice. Here's my confession to you guys. I don't find myself um, differentiating often between contour and bronzer, honestly. Sometimes I just combine them into one category and just leave it at that. I know you're not supposed to do that, but here on this channel we break makeup rules all the time. I do like to take the brush and apply uh, the product to my face in a way that accentuates my cheekbones and whenever I'm trying to apply any bronzer-like product to my face, that's the objective to intensify my cheekbones and make them pop. So that's what I end up using that for. So. I never go for like a really warm bronzer. The shades that I go for are a little bit closer to the contour effect. These palettes from City Color are great. Um, I have the Contour Effects 1 and the Contour Effects 2 palette. You can use these two colors for bronze and contour. I prefer to mix them together. Then the other palette is a lot warmer. So this is what this palette looks like. You can see right there. I, however, love to go for the Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Kit. This is a classic, it's been around forever. Mine is in the shade Light Medium. I go for this shade, which is called Fawn. You can get it on a, with you can get it as a single on the on their website. And this is like one of my fail-safe, tried and true, very natural contour, like contour colors. It is very difficult for me to screw up. If you are a regular viewer to my channel, you probably have noticed several occasions in which I have basically kind of overdone my bronzer slash contour job. It sometimes ends up looking like really super intense. Um, I've been trying to do less of that. I'm not perfect at what I do, okay? So I try to learn from my mistakes. I try to learn from looking at footage, from seeing how I do my makeup. I learn every single time I edit, basically. So I have noticed that Sometimes with certain formulas, it's not necessarily the best idea to go too heavy handed. And also, I will say that if you don't have foundation on your skin, it's more difficult to blend out face products because foundation is essentially the base for all the face products to go on. And face products, like I said before, are formulated to go on your foundation. So when you don't have any foundation on, it's a little bit difficult for face products to blend out, especially contour or bronzer. So I think that a lot of times my bronzer and my contour has looked really terrible because I just overdid it and I went in too heavily. Bronzer and contour, I find it's a lot more forgiving when you just apply it on top of foundation. And that's what we're doing today, so hopefully I won't screw it up this time. I'm joking. I'm joking, of course. But um, I will say that if I'm ever like looking for something that will be amazing for a contour or for like a shadow effect, which is exactly what contouring is, I like to go for a powder that has a little bit of a gray tone. I think that these powders, even though they look quite gray tone, they come off as quite neutral. And the Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Kit this powder just comes off really cool tone and kind of gray toned, which is what you want in a contour kind of powder because you want a powder that will be able to create that shadow effect. If you're going for just a bronzing powder, this is the kind of like color palette to use because as you can see, these are super, super warm and they're kind of bronzer-y. I would not like to use this as a contour because it would make my face look bad, especially if I wasn't wearing foundation. So today I'm gonna to be using this color. 
Also, for a brush, I know I'm going so in depth with this video, but there's so many different uh, brushes you can use for contouring. My personal favorite, and the one that I always, always go back to, is this one right here from EcoTools. And I've had it for years. I don't know if they still make it, but this particular shape and this density and the way the bristles are shaped, it is great. This is pretty much like the overall shape of the brush. I also have some other brushes that I honestly don't use. For example, this one right here, the Morphe M530. It's not a brush I'd recommend. It's just, I mean, it's a contour brush apparently, but like the bristles go everywhere and I think it sheds and I barely, like I've barely used it that much. It's bad. There are other Morphe brushes you can get, not that one. This one, however, is great. So what I do, is I take the brush, I like to swirl it into the powder that I'm using. Whenever I'm sculpting out my face, I always like to basically lift my face, make, make the illusion of a lifted face. I do this by applying the product slightly above the natural hollow of where my cheekbone is. Because my natural like, cheekbone, like this is, this is where my hollow is, my natural hollow. Like right there, that's where my hollow is. So if I applied bronzer or contour in that area, it would accentuate that cheekbone, but it wouldn't necessarily lift my face. So what I do is I apply the product slightly higher, almost directly on the cheekbone, but that like, little um, increase in height really helps lift my face in a natural way. You don't want to go too high, you don't want to start applying your bronzer here, that would look terrible, in my opinion. Um, but applying the bronzer slightly higher than where your natural cheekbone is, or where your natural hollow is, really creates a naturally lifted effect, as well as accentuating your cheekbone. So I'm just going to take the color, and I'm going to lightly use it to contour my face. Uh, usually I like to go like ham, not gonna lie, uh, but I like to start off like relatively like just soft because I really want to create that, again, that blended effect and I don't want to screw it up. I take another load of product and I apply some color into my temple area. Also, I like to dip the brush back into the powder and lightly apply some product down to the center of my face because we have so much color um, on the outer regions of the face, I want to balance it out slightly by adding some color here as well. I have applied virtually all of my face makeup right now. Now what I would do is I would move on to my eyeshadow, I would do my under eye, I would then apply some mascara and false lashes. I think it's really important, in my opinion, to not apply your mascara and false lashes until you're done with your highlighter or with any other powder on your face. Because, let's just take highlighter for example. If I had false lashes on my eyes right now and I was taking this brush and applying highlighter to my face, little particles of that highlighter would get caught in the lashes and then the lashes wouldn't be as dark and dramatic as I would like. So what I do is I just do my face makeup then do my under eye eyeshadow and then go in with mascara and lashes. And then of course I finish it off with my lip colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all those things and I'll be right back. Alright guys, so that is pretty much it for this video. This was a pretty hefty one to film and there was a lot of information packed in here. As you guys can see now, I have pretty much finished my lower lash line, my lashes my mascara, my lip. So I think like you can pretty much see here how like the whole look comes together. I feel like I always love doing like really just like intense and dramatic um, eyes and lips and that's why I like to keep the rest simple. I mean, I like being able to look at my face and see like the different uh, flaws that I have like in terms of acne or blemishes. Um, it's kind of interesting, especially when I have like such a bright and colorful makeup look and that's why I tend to go for like the more natural coverage because I just like the way it looks on me. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it very informative and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys.